What up my peeps? It's your Nucka, Big Rucker, back at you again with another action figure review, this time courtesy of Star Wars, the Black Series. What we have before us is Sergeant Creel, fan channel exclusive, and uh, it's technically a uh, deluxe set simply because of the box, uh, as you'll see when we uh, open up the packaging and uh, comes in this nice box here this nice uh, style packaging you see the uh, lovely artwork there on the front you've got Star Wars the top Sergeant Creel below the artwork and of course the thing that you'll notice is Sergeant uh, Creel is wielding a lightsaber which is uh, very uh, unusual for a stormtrooper we'll get into that momentarily turn into the uh, side of the box you see you've got some uh, black and white style artwork showing Creel doing his thing then of course we turn to the back and we have more artwork you can see Creel with his lightsaber and his lightsaber is green you got the legalese then on the other side there the back of the box you've got Sergeant Creel going down right down the middle you see some more artwork of uh, Sergeant Creel You've got the Star Wars the Black Series logo there. Turning back to the front and looking at the top of the box, you see you've got more artwork of old Sarge there. And you have artwork there on the bottom. Then in order to uh, open up the box, it's uh, held tight by Velcro. And as you can see, you get some uh, pretty nice insert there. Uh, side panel there more artwork and of course you've got the figure of uh, Sergeant Creel with his accessories uh, right there as far as uh, the readout let's turn this more this way so I'll be able to read it to you guys he does come with a readout and it's as follows Sergeant Creel, formerly undercover agent 5241, serves as the leader of an elite group of stormtroopers, Task Force 99, better known as Scar Squadron, under the direct command of Darth Vader. And uh, yeah, so this all happened after he became uh, a sergeant. He uh, had a very uh, kind of a tragic beginning. You know, basically everybody he uh, ever cared for was killed uh, in um, uh, like gladiator arenas and um, he saw his uh, father get killed in the arena. It said that his, he, his mother died in the arena too, which he also witnessed. Um, he made a friend who also uh, 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 was killed in a, uh, a uh, I believe it was a rebel attack and uh, so yeah so uh, he uh, ultimately joined the uh, stormtrooper corps and he eventually uh, he got promoted to the rank of sergeant and he was a sergeant in the uh, 501st squadron which we uh, we know well that squadron has uh, been um, directly under the command of Darth Vader himself speaking of Darth Vader he was approached by Vader and recruited by Vader to uh, go undercover as the readout indicated and um, yeah he uh, was to infiltrate uh, the palace of uh, one Gracchus the Hut. so uh, he did that and he ended up he, he, he posed as a uh, as a gladiator like slave that he was sold to Gracchus and um, he fought in the arena, you know, very successful. He ended up becoming a uh, trainer, and uh, he uh, he trained all kinds of uh, of uh, species, and um, including Wookies, lizard men, humans. He also trained Luke Skywalker, and uh, he was known as the Game Master. So um, yeah, he became uh, pretty well known. He was uh, pretty adept at using swords so uh, that's how he trained uh, trained his recruits his uh, the gladiators and um, he ultimately uh, became uh, in charge of task force 99 as was uh, stated in the in the 
the little bio there. He fought, he dueled Luke Skywalker several times, and uh, the last time they fought, uh, Luke ended up uh, destroying Creel's lightsaber, whom he acquired from Gracchus when uh, Gracchus was finally uh, arrested and uh, he had a stash full of all kinds of uh, Jedi relics and uh, Creel took a lightsaber and uh, that's how he ended up with his lightsaber but anyway enough about that real quick give you that little bio on Sergeant Steel what we're going to do now is open up the packaging and get Steel out looking at Sergeant Steel's accessories he comes with the standard blasters you see it's molded in black even though it's got nice detail hard to really discern it unless you look up close because there is no uh, no paint apps at all just the standard black but uh, yeah pretty nice weapon there and of course the Feast de Resistance when it comes to Sergeant Creel we have his lightsaber you see that it's uh, green the saber itself and uh, the uh, the handle or the hilt molded in a uh, kind of a charcoalish gray and it's got the silver paint apps right there at the uh, at the uh, we'll call it the business end of the uh, of the handle where the uh, saber gets uh, ignited from so pretty nice I believe this does separate yes so you could have him uh, sport this uh, with the uh, saber not engaged so that's pretty cool so here we have Sergeant Creel on our rotating base giving you a 360 degree visual view glance at the figure so you could see what we're working with and uh, obviously first glance it's a stormtrooper technically another stormtrooper just a little bit uh, it's been done up some so uh, it makes uh, Sergeant Creel unique as far as stormtroopers go so uh, but you know helmet black white some of the uh, accoutrements that uh, Creel has is what makes him stand out like the uh, the red pauldron and uh, the uh, insignia that's on that but we will take a uh, look at all of that when we get Sergeant Creel up close in personal which we are going to do momentarily so here we have Sergeant Creel up close and personal and uh, looking at the uh, head sculpt first that helmet you see that it's uh, yeah it's uh, you know a stormtroopers helmet it's got some nice uh, deco on it though uh, kind of grayish silver highlights there uh, we've got the uh, the line work there on um, the sides of the uh, of the helmet there I think they are supposed to be like uh, grill work for um, I don't know if they're insignia of any kind it might be I'm not up on my uh, lore like that but he does have some nice highlights there and uh, turning into his back you could see even more of the paint on the back of the skull there then of course we've got going down to his uh, right shoulder he's got the pauldron there and the uh, insignia um, that's supposed to signify the task force uh, 99 I'm uh, I'm certain uh, either that or uh, the uh, 501st that I'm not quite sure about I think it's supposed to be for task force 99 anybody that's up on their Star Wars lore from the comics let a brother know he doesn't want to get it wrong so he's not going to uh, sign off on what he just said and I'm done speaking in the third person you see uh, it's uh, molded into black and then of course you've got the red on the pauldron itself turning to the side you see one of those accoutrements that I was speaking of he's got a a, a pouch there and it's loose so it's an, an add-on so that's cool you see it it moves it swings freely you go down he's got another this is a wrist attachment of some kind what purpose I couldn't tell you I just know it makes him look cooler than the, the average uh, stormtrooper 
you see uh, he's got uh, at his uh, waist area it's uh, molded in a uh, black and of course you've got his belt his utility belt as if as it were and uh, spinning it around he's got a uh, holster there for his uh, hand weapon which fits in pretty snugly as you can see right there so that's cool I like how it hangs uh, to the rear just uh, like I said just makes him even cooler he's got uh, on his left uh, thigh another pouch there which is cool on his right side hanging from his belt he's got another pouch that uh, no paint details but once again they still look cool I think uh, I don't know for some reason for me the fact that they're all black just makes him look cooler so it's no biggie that there are no paint apps this go around pretty nice he's got the white patches on the tops of his uh, gloved hands on the back there his uh, pack he's got uh, it's molded in a black and it's part of his uh, sculpted um, well it's it's actually glued on but you know what I'm saying you can't remove it so you have that going down you see where his uh, knees are his left knee has got a uh, knee pad and uh, his right does not then of course you've got the boots black soles going down looking at his articulation Creel's head is on a uh, dumbbell and uh, he can look up that much you can look down that much you see that pollen is moving right along with him he can tilt his head more to the left you can get the attitude to the left this is of course keeping him from doing the right and he can uh, turn left to right he, he could technically rotate 360 but the pollen is going to uh, prevent that as far as his uh, arms are concerned he can get his arms up his uh, shoulder pad is connected to the shoulder so that's gonna impede a bit and you see that if you keep it there too long it will warp out but it'll eventually come back down and uh, he can uh, lift his arm up you won't get 360 because of that pad and be mindful of your uh, your pouch there the floating pouch you could raise it up or let it hang he has a single jointed elbows which he has excellent range can't front on that and of course it swivels as is typical with black series he's got a uh, wrist swivel and the hinge is uh, horizontal on his left on his left arm on his right his uh, wrist is it is vertical mine's is just a little stiff but it is vertical and of course the left hand or excuse me the right hand has a uh, trigger finger whereas on the left it uh, it also has a, a trigger finger kind of but the the hand is more open this hand is more for grasping the muzzle of his weapon than it is for uh, actually you know using it to fire they're pretty soft and pliable so you probably could uh, could fudge it and it's open enough that you can um, possibly have uh, Creel wield his lightsaber with two hands so that's uh, pretty cool as far as his uh, torso is concerned he's got an ab he's got a diaphragm I should say and he can go forward one click that far forward and about a click going back as you can see he can rock and lean side to side pretty well and of course you're going to get that rotation which is cool legs hips you can spread them about that far he can get them up once again be careful because the uh, apparatus that's hanging off of his belt could warp if you leave his legs open uh, you know up for an extended period of time you see right there it'll end up going back down as far as going back pretty decent going back and of course you've got the swivel there he's got single jointed knees once again be wary of the floating pouch that's on his thigh and of course the knees swivel he's got uh, ankle toe he could point his toe that far forward 
that far up, not that far up, it uh, kind of hits the uh, bottom of that shin there. He does have ankle pivot and of course holes, peg holes at the bottom of his feet. He is Creel wielding his lightsaber and as I stated previously you can get him to grasp with uh, both hands so you should be able to get some relatively cool poses with that lightsaber. And he is Creel wielding his blaster in that left hand. Like I said that hand isn't really meant for, to be the primary uh, hand used for uh, firing a weapon but it can be fudged. So uh, I actually have the uh, the uh, trigger finger in the trigger housing there so yeah like I said uh, looks pretty cool uh, Sergeant Creel does. Uh, his uh, just the uh, the deco and the uh, you know it's it's that lightsaber it's the lightsaber that just uh, changes everything about this particular stormtrooper now for some comparisons of course we're going to kick it off with an imperial stormtrooper and uh, you can see uh, the similarities in the helmets just a different uh, deco there on the uh, the cheat grills we'll call them and of course you know he's got the pauldron and uh, like I said all of those extra accoutrements just make uh, that's what makes a uh, Creel stand out and um, and you know it separates him from your standard stormtrooper and of course there's the ever-present lightsaber that just totally sets it off next I'll have him lined up with a couple of fellow pauldron uh, wearers and uh, you see uh, the differences right there uh, which make uh, these uh, troopers totally uh, distinguished from one another on our left we have an artillery trooper and on our right we have an incinerator trooper unfortunately I don't have a Luke Skywalker can you believe it collect Star Wars and I don't have a Luke Skywalker I should say yet because I do have the uh, Luke Skywalker from the uh, Mandalorian series uh, it's on pre-order so whenever that ever gets here then I'll have a Luke Skywalker finally and uh, as far as Darth Vader I do have a Darth but I have him I've never opened him I got him just to uh, stay uh, mint on card um, because it is Darth Vader uh, I really uh, only uh, collect uh, Black Series figures that uh, deal with uh, Disney Plus and I'll dabble here or there and um, you know pick and choose and get something. I actually uh, got uh, Creel here because of uh, uh, an order for uh, my uh, online store Shameless Plug which I will talk about uh, uh, a little bit later but right now since I don't have those two what I've got uh, Sergeant Creel next to is a 501st Legion clone trooper now this isn't the uh, the troopers that uh, he was a sergeant of this uh, the clone trooper was of course uh, prior to uh, regular humans or humanoids uh, became stormtroopers so uh, but uh, this is a close I have to a 501st trooper so uh, there you have it and uh, you can see uh, the uh, the differences uh, in their uh, uniforms also as far as the figures concerned 501st which is from the archive uh, collection has double jointed elbows and uh, you gotta love that so to sum it all up the Hasbro Star Wars the Black Series Deluxe fan channel exclusive Sergeant Creel is a very nice uh, figure um, it's a basic stormtrooper uh, configuration it does have the extras such as the pauldron the uh, the extra pouches on the uh, bicep and the thigh as well as the uh, the uh, the pouch that hangs from his belt on his uh, right leg and of course the feast de resistance the highlight he comes with a lightsaber. He uh, actually uh, knows how to use the lightsaber because he is an expert swordsman and uh, known for training Luke Skywalker. And uh, yeah, all of those uh, extra accoutrements really set him off 
from your standard, your typical stormtrooper, so it's uh, pretty nice. If you all agree, if you like the review, if you like the figure, and uh, you're interested in acquiring one, then I have in uh, the description below a link to my online toy store. And uh, hit on that and uh, see what you could do and uh, take a look around. It might be something else you like. So yeah, it's called uh, Chaotic Entertainment and Toy Shop. And I specialize in, uh, of course, action figures. And uh, the entertainment part is uh, because I also provide DJ services. So that's a pretty unique combination. DJ services and the selling of collectibles. But uh, hey, had to come up with an original idea. So that's what I came up with. So yeah, that'll be in the description below. So click on that and uh, we'll see what's the what. Uh, as far as this review is concerned, we're about to be done, but before we do that, more housekeeping, dealing with the channel itself, please like, share, subscribe, leave comments below, uh, your questions, your comments, your concerns, I want them all, uh, we've got a few days left, and uh, unless there's some sort of rush, I'm probably not going to do it, but I still have to strive for it, I'm looking to get 500 subscribers by the end of July, and uh, Hopefully uh, I can attain that goal even if I can't still want to see how close to it I can get and uh, I'm still you know slowly but surely I'm getting more and more subscribers so I do appreciate you guys for rocking with me so um, that'll do it on behalf of Sergeant Creel and the Ruck Nest Monster remember the hunt continues and I'm out peace